Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. Since my last update, we've had the first named storm of the season, Storm Ashley. Now, is for another one on the way as we head through the next two weeks. Let's take a look. And I'll begin with the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 22nd of October. It's a fairly quiet picture to begin with. We've got high pressure centre to the south, a west or a southwesterly flow covering the UK, so mainly dry, just a few showers dotted around and a bit of patchy rain in the far northwest. As I run the sequence, we see high pressure, keeps things quite settled to begin with, but then through Thursday, Friday and the weekend, the Atlantic begins to push back in. So outbreaks of rain and stronger winds return. I think there's just an outside chance that one of these areas of low pressure may develop enough to become a name storm. As I say though, that's probably not the most likely scenario. But they will bring outbreaks of rain to all parts of the UK. Now, that fairly mixed pitch event continues for a while. Another band of rain makes its way southeastwards. But in the days which follow, so the first half of next week, high pressure builds once again, increasingly influential. It's turning drier and more settled. In fact, at the end of the first week, according to this computer model run, that high pressure really is starting to look like quite a significant feature. The upper air temperature and jet stream sequence for the first week to begin with, the UK here is under the green shading. That's fairly close to average temperatures at about 1500 meters above our heads, approximately. The blues and purples there to the north are where the cold air is, and of course the orange is down to the south, indicating the warm air. As I run it, what we see is that the jet stream there stays quite close to the UK early on, but then later it begins to migrate northwards and we see the yellows and oranges bathing the United Kingdom. So temperatures aloft at least are heading back up. What does all that mean for the conditions we can expect down at the ground level? A few charts to illustrate. Wednesday the 23rd of October, temperatures vary in the south around 17, 18 Celsius, so it's mild, even almost quite warm in the afternoon sunshine. Cooler as you head northwards, 10 to 13 Celsius there in Scotland and Northern Ireland. Forwards to Thursday, it's a very, very similar picture. But by Friday, the more unsettled conditions are returning. Also, temperatures are dipping. We've, we're getting cooler air pushing in from the west, 12s, maybe 13s in southern Britain, a few degrees lower as you head northwards. Into the weekend, it's a fairly mixed picture which continues. Some dry spells, but also showers or longer periods of rain. Sunday, more of the same. This indicates that there could well be outbreaks of rain pushing across England and Wales, but at this stage, of course, the details are uncertain. But into next week, and high pressure is building from the south, temperatures are starting to climb again. So all in all, quite a mixed picture through the first week, settled, unsettled, settled. One thing to look out for in the short term is that fog could develop quite widely on uh, Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. This shows what the UKV expects to happen. The dark shading there indicates where the fog is the densest, so really in southern and central parts of Britain. Rainfall. The aggregates here are for days 0 to 5, generated using data from the ECM and GFS models. Both are shown the wettest conditions to be in the northwest, so the Western Isles, Western Scotland. The GFS on the right has higher rain totals than the ECM in East Anglia and the southeast, so that is something to look out for as we head into that more unsettled period. Moving forwards to the 0 to 10 day aggregates. The totals have continued increasing in the northwest with some orange shading there now indicating over 100 millimetres of rain through the period. The values though in central and eastern and southern parts of the UK haven't really gone up a great deal. Pointing towards high pressure having quite a lot of influence through that five to ten day part of the forecast period. Now in more general terms, 
Do the deterministic models agree with each other as we head towards the end of the first week? So here's a signal for high pressure to build, which the GFS is showing here on Tuesday the 29th, reflected in the other computer model output. The Canadian model, well, very similar, high pressure, German icon, the ECM model, and finally the UK Met Office Global, high pressure there building up from the south, perhaps more of an Atlantic influence there just in the far north. But I think taking them as a whole, good agreement on the general idea, which is that high pressure will be increasingly influential as we head towards the end of the first week, particularly in the southern half of the UK. Now, does that continue to be the case as we head through the second week? Of course, it's just about the trends and the probabilities at this range. Starting with the 16-day GEFS plot for London, 850 HPA temperatures across the top, the thick purple line there, the ensemble mean staying above the thick black line, the 30-year average through the period, so a strong signal for temperatures to be above the norm at this level. With that said, there are a few runs dipping quite sharply, so I think a lot really depends on where the high pressure becomes centred. Rainfall, well, mostly dry to start off with, but a number of spikes there showing up later, which are forecasting a growing risk of rain as we head towards the end of the second week. Mild air aloft, probably. How does that reflect to conditions down at the surface? Here are the two meter temperature forecasts. Lots of yellow in these columns. Those runs going for between 11 and 15 Celsius through the days. A little bit of the orange there, 16 to 20, so those would suggest very mild or even quite warm days are not totally out of the question. With that said, though, the amount of orange does dip there, and even to start off with, it is in a minority. Overnight lows are light greens, six to tens, indicating that once you get out of London, ground frost may be developing on some nights. A lot, of course, would depend on the extent of cloud cover, and as I've been saying, the positioning of the high pressure cell. Forwards to Manchester, it's a very, very similar story. Quite a big spread, a bigger spread, I think, in terms of 850 HPA temperature forecasts from the runs in the GEFS through the second week. So some, as I'm saying, are bringing in colder air, but the ensemble mean there staying above the 30 year average. More rain spikes along the bottom than there were on the London chart, so perhaps more changeable conditions starting to return here earlier than they are in the southeast. Two meter temperature data tables, very similar to the London ones, although there is a more marked signal for them to dip later on in the second week, both through the days and through the nights. So you can see there's more dark green shading there showing up towards the end of the second week. Finally, up to Glasgow, a little bit different across the top here, the ensemble mean there, fluctuating around the 30 year average, but there is really, once more, a very, very big spread there showing up. Some runs are bringing very mild air back, even this far north. A number, though, are going colder. One or two later on are dipping down to around the minus 10, 850 HPA line, which of course is, in the winter months is used to indicate deep cold in the United Kingdom. But as much as the warm runs are in minority, so are those very cold ones. Two meter temperatures for Glasgow. A similar trend really to the previous two charts. If anything, edging downwards a little bit as we head towards the end of the second week through the days and the nights. You can see there's more blue shading beginning to appear on the overnight lows and blue indicates air frost below naught Celsius. But that said, still a minority around 20% by the end of the second week, 20% of the individual runs in the GEFS. The mean surface level pressure data table for York, lots of orange through the first couple of days there, runs which are going for between 1,026 to 1,040 millibar, so strongly high pressure oriented. Those dip though, as I say, and the amount of yellow in the comms increases, those mainly close to or a little bit of the average pressure. Later on, it's quite a mixed picture which shows up because 
there's an increasing amount of green and blue and purple runs which are dominated by low pressure. Also a significant number of stain in the orange bucket, so strongly high pressure oriented. So uncertainty grows towards the end of the second week according to this, perhaps more changeable conditions, but high pressure may still be retaining a lot of influence. And the snapshot chart from the GEFS showing mean surface level pressure on Friday the 1st of November supports the idea of high pressure being centered to the south but extending its influence northwards across much of the UK. The Atlantic there likely to remain a player in the far north at least. That's according to the, this chart which is generated by averaging out all of the individual runs within the GEFS ensemble. All in all though, taking those together, it doesn't look particularly cold, not particularly active in terms of mobility with systems pushing in from the west, so there could well be quite a lot of quiet weather to be found for the second week. So to summarise, week one it starts dry but then unsettled conditions return from the west. Later on though, it becomes drier and more settled once again. The trend for temperatures is mild, then average, then quite possibly mild to finish the week. Week two, quite settled, especially in the south, more mixed in the northwest generally. Temperatures are going to be dependent upon the position of the high pressure and fog could develop quite widely, particularly in the south, but that high pressure positioning will to an extent determine the risk of frost, so a good deal of uncertainty around that. Towards the end of the second week it gradually turns more changeable from the northwest, so rain could be pushing back down into all parts of the UK by then. So there we have it. I think a good deal of quiet autumnal weather to be found through the next two weeks, although there is that period of more unsettled conditions through the middle part of the first week. Temperatures fluctuating, there isn't really a very strong signal to be had. I think the likelihood is that over the two weeks as a whole they will be above the average, maybe significantly so, although as I've been emphasising the positioning of high pressure through week two will be a big factor. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. As ever, if you did, then please consider hitting the like button below and subscribing to the channel if you've not done so already. Of course, remember to stay up to date with the day-to-day -day weather developments by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thanks very much now. Bye. <laughs>